Welcome to Scottish Independence Explained, where we look at the history of Scottish independence and how it relates to the situation today. In this final episode, we look at the situation today. Seven years on from the 2014 referendum and we're still talking about Scottish independence, and that is arguably for one major reason. Brexit. The results of the 2016 Brexit referendum took the UK out of the EU, and this did not go down well in Scotland. See, every constituency in Scotland voted unanimously to remain in the EU, and many were angry that Scotland's voice was not being heard. And so, the Scottish National Party and the Scottish Green Party once again made manifesto promises to ensure that, should a pro-independence majority enter Holyrood after the 2021 Scottish election, work would once again commence on holding another independence referendum. A pro-independence majority was voted in during the 2021 election. In fact, it was the strongest pro-independence majority of all time, beating the record set during the 2011 election by just one seat. The Scottish National Party had 64 seats, and the Scottish Greens had 7. As such, both parties saw this as a mandate for another independence referendum, to be held after the COVID-19 pandemic has been brought under control and before the next Scottish election. As we emerge from the pandemic, choices fall to be made that will shape our economy and our society for decades to come. Which Parliament, Westminster or Holyrood, should make these choices? And what principles will they be guided by? However, permission is needed from Westminster for Holyrood to hold a referendum that relates to the Union, and Prime Minister Boris Johnson is determined not to grant it. Should you allow a referendum? Well, let, let's, uh, let's wait and see what uh, actually happens, but uh, I think that most people in, uh, in, in Scotland, most people around the whole of the UK, feel that this is not the time. The Scottish National Party and Scottish Greens say this is undemocratic and therefore entirely unsustainable, and say that a referendum will be heard regardless of what Boris Johnson has to say. We get a majority of members of Parliament, of course, elected under the SNP manifesto. That is a mandate for independence. Do you mean you seize it? No, we, we have a democratic um, right to, uh, but to you obtain can, it. You so that's everything we know out of the way. Now let's move on to the fun part, the hypotheticals. Say Scotland doesn't get permission to hold a referendum, but does it anyway. Then say the results of the referendum are revealed and, hey, Scotland wants to go out alone. Well, now the ball's in Westminster's court. Except not a tennis court, a Supreme Court. If the Scottish Government passes legislation that the UK Government believes to be outside their jurisdiction, they have four weeks to challenge it in the Supreme Court. If they don't, the legislation stands. If Scotland votes for independence, the UK must bring them to court if they want to overturn this. Asked about this prospect, Nicola Sturgeon says she would be utterly shocked if the UK government brought them to court in order to overturn a democratic vote. It definitely wouldn't look good and would be far more likely to fuel nationalist sentiment rather than quell it, but let's consider what would happen if Westminster goes down this path, and it succeeds. Well, Scotland's last resort would be the UN. The UN stipulates that all people have a right to self-determination. As Scotland has always been considered a country, even after they became part of Britain, the Scottish people are no different. However, whether or not the UN would intervene is extremely difficult to determine, and any side that claims to know what would happen is talking out of their unmentionables. So there you have it. That's everything we can possibly hypothesise about how a vote would go down. Now it's time to move on to how the arguments have developed since the 2014 referendum. The big one is Brexit, unsurprisingly. In 2014, the Better Together campaign warned Scotland that if they left the UK, then they would have no guarantee that they could rejoin the EU. For obvious reasons, that point is no longer relevant, and indeed, some on the yes side say independence is Scotland's only route back into the EU. On the other hand, if Scotland joins the EU after leaving the UK, then there would be a hard border between Scotland and England, unless a Northern Ireland style deal was reached. If not, trade between the two countries would suffer heavily. The Yes campaign's promise that Scotland would be able to support itself financially took a hit when the COVID-19 pandemic happened. While Sturgeon argues that independence is more important now than ever before, since she believes Scotland needs to be rebuilt after COVID on its own terms, it can't be denied that all economies took a hit and more financial uncertainty is unappealing to many. There has also been some progress in terms of devolution. This can be a positive or a negative thing depending on where you stand. The Yes side would object to the fact that there are new powers but they are not reflective of the promises made by the Better Together campaign during the referendum. But those who support the Union would say that we're moving in the right direction. One of the most common arguments laid out by the Unionists is the lambasting of the argumentative nature of a referendum. It has become the fashion for politicians who are against the vote taking place to refer to it as a divisive referendum. The 2014 referendum certainly caused many discussions amongst the people of Scotland. However, it is difficult to understand the point of this argument, prevalent though it is, considering that having different opinions is a fundamental part of a healthy democracy. Every vote creates division, but what is the alternative? Regardless, it looks like the coming years will give us a very interesting political scenario. We shall see what happens, but no matter how the situation plays out, 
The movement for Scottish independence will never be the same again.